you want to promote your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Afric Today. Fogham, where you can watch us live at the same time on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Afric Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africktoday.com. Afric Today, the best of digital TV. Hi, we're inviting you to watch a special program that will be broadcasted on Afric Today, the digital... Do you want to promote your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Afric Today. Fogham, where you can watch us live at the same time on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Afric Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africtoday.com. Afric Today, the best of digital TV. Hello and welcome to American Africans United, hosted by Afric Today. And I am your host, Yvette Butler Yaboa, and our Invisible Man is also with us here today. Hello. And we're excited about yeah, and we're excited about today's presentation. As you know, we've been doing a series of workshops on building black wealth. So we're really excited to bring back another individual, 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 sorry about that, to talk about how to invest your money wisely. And our show is going to be a little different today because we're going to have two separate sections because, as you know, the census has been a very delicate issue. And there's a lot of change that have just recently happened and voted upon. And you need to know about that as well. So later on, in the last half an hour, the last 15 minutes of this show, we're going to have our Honorable Congressman Jamie Raskin on with us from District 8 to really talk about what does the census really mean and what are some of the changes that we need to know about today. But without further ado, and before I introduce my guest, as you know, we always start our show up with a quick video. So we're going to get right into this because we don't have a lot of time today. So I want to get right in and want to show the first video on really quick on how to invest. Then I'm going to introduce our special guest for you today. Mm -hmm. 
to understand if investing is right for you. I want you to start as soon as you can, but I don't want you to start before you should. Understand your basic financial picture, what you have, what you owe, what you make, and what you spend. If you have high fee, high interest rate credit, the best investment is getting rid of that. High interest rate and high fee products may be necessary in some situations, but they are not a long-term solution. Get that credit under control, get your financial house in order, and then start investing. Okay, that was a quick video to show you about just the two most important things to do before you start to invest. Today we're going to have with us Michael, called Mike Campbell. He's a licensed insurance, a licensed insurance and real estate broker for over 20 years, experience in the industry with real estate and mortgage loan business. His area of operation expands from the state of California all the way to East Coast here in Maryland. Mike is a seasoned business professional and accomplished entrepreneur owning several companies that provide a multitude of products and services. His latest company is to provide multitude of products. Um, his latest venture is Firebrand LLC, which you'll hear a lot more about today. He launched it with his son, Michael Campbell Jr. In addition to licenses held in the California state, he also has licensed in Arizona, Louisiana, Georgia, and as I said, here in Maryland. Accompanied by his Bachelor of Science degree of finance from the California State University of Stanislaw and his JD degree, Juris Doctorate degree with a business law certification from the University of San Francisco School of Law, we want to welcome Michael Campbell to our show. Michael, are you there? Hey, hey. Yes, 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 yes. Can you see me? Yep. Oh, now All I right. can see you. Oh, my God. You look great. You got a haircut and everything. You're looking good today, looking sharp. Hey, you know what? Hey, likewise. Likewise. I like I like the outfit. I like the color coordination oh, you have on. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have to, you know, this, this is all about Af American Africans United, so That's I have right. to be very culturally appropriate whenever I come That's on the show. Right. That's right. That's right. I, I didn't bring my dashiki today, but trust me, I have it. So <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate the invite and, and I'm happy to be here once again with you guys uh, having this discussion. Can I, I am so glad question? that you gave us the time. Yes, definitely. Uh, you know, I'm invisible, so money don't mean a whole lot to me. That's right. But for the people who live in the physical world and they have to deal with it. I ran across a thing. What is a, a dollar cost average? Can you, does that ring a bell? Yeah, that rings a bell. Uh, definitely. Dollar cost averaging is a, is a uh, investing approach to uh, investment strategy, I should say. You know, dollar cost averaging is when you take a, a lump sum of money and instead of investing it all at one time, you actually uh, take it and you invest it over a period of time. And uh, the reason for doing that is because if you if you are to average, I mean, you're you're to invest it over a period of time, then you can uh, better better catch the highs and lows of, of the market, and and not. Uh, take one big hit at one time, you know, say for instance, you, you, you put all your chips in and you buy at the top of the market yes, and then, sir. and then the market drops the following, uh, the following month. Well, if you had done dollar cost averaging, you would have took a portion of that money, you know, and you would have invested it then and you would have bought high, but then guess what? When the market drops next month, you would have been able to buy, buy in that low because the name of the game is what? to buy low, sell high. Now, that's 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 as much as I'll share about that because you know, I don't I do not deal in securities, so I don't have a securities license, but I am a, a finance major and I do uh I do understand the concept. Thank you. Mhm. Mm 
And then well, you then mentioned you, you mentioned that. something, uh, uh, Invisible Man. Uh, you you said you said money doesn't mean much to you yes, because you because you're invisible. And I love I, lo <laughs> I love that. And I tell you know sometimes people tell me you know when we're talking investing they say oh well you know. Oh, uh, you talk about money, you know, and, and and money is in everything, and you know, money can't buy you everything. And and guess what I say? I say that's true, but being broke doesn't buy you anything. That's so right. you know, <laughs> you, every everything is about balance, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, I, I love the way you I love I love the way you put that. But I want to talk go back to the video now. Can you walk us through? really how to invest your money wisely and what are some of the steps that we need to take now if we have a little extra money how do yeah. we start investing that and i love the way he says clean up your credit first so can you please tell us a little bit more about that and how we can invest yeah the gentleman the gentleman was spot on you know uh before you begin to invest your money uh the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're in a position to invest because usually when you're investing that's a long-term goal you know you have a long-term goal to be able to accumulate wealth and uh over a period of time so you cannot uh start investing and then uh, divest, you know, because you need to go, you know, pay the water bill or, you know, you get you have a flat tire or, you know, you got creditors that you need to take care of. So what the gentleman was speaking about was making sure that you have your ducks in order, you know, so to speak, in, before you take the uh, take the journey into investing. So, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, if you have outstanding credit uh, balances or you have uh, uh, things going on that need to be taken care of on a recurring basis that you you make sure that you have enough money coming in to accomplish that goal of paying your day-to-day -day bills and taking care of your creditors uh, for the outstanding debt that you have. And then you want to take a portion of that money that, um, that you're earning on a monthly basis, weekly basis or whatnot, and you want to dedicate that to yourself and um, use that towards your future. Because what I tell people is this, I say, you know, a portion of everything you earn is yours to keep. And that's something that I don't think we really internalize enough of because usually what we do is we overextend ourselves. You know, the more money you make, the more money you spend, the more you consume. And before you know it, you wonder where the money is going and you don't you don't have anything to invest or to save because you 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 divvied it all out you know, to, to creditors and you, you know, bought this and bought that. So we have to remember, you know, a portion of everything you earn is yours to keep. And that means you really need to keep it. And not only do you need to keep it, you need to be a good shepherd with it. You need to grow it. So, so you want to make sure that you take care of every, every, uh, all of your day-to-day uh, -day debts, but you also want to make sure you start, uh, you start putting away for the future. And, um, and you want to create an emergency fund. So, you know, it's a, it's a couple of different things there. It's a couple of components there, uh, Dr. Butler, that, you know, you want to make sure you're doing so that you do this investing thing correctly. But first and foremost, you want to make sure that you're stabilized. You know, you can't have you can't have stuff in collections and you're trying to invest and save. I mean, it means that you're not you, you're not going about it the right way. Okay, thank you. And I want I want to just make a note. Remember, um, my audience, this is a live show, so you can call in. The call-in number is on your screen. So please jot that down if you want to call in. Uh, this portion of this conversation today, we'll, we're going to you'll be able to call in to about 740. So do call in. You can call in after that and talk to uh, your Congressman Raskin. But please note that number now and call in. So now you're saying... We had to put in for the long haul. So, Mr. Yes. Campbell, one of the things that I that I think about is now I'm up in age, but those individuals who are past fifty, going into sixty, maybe past sixty, how can we invest now and invest wisely? And then, can you tell us from those younger perspectives? Because I know everyone says start early, but when you're investing, and how can we invest now? Sure. 
That's that's a good question. So so you can you can start investing anytime, right? You can you can start investing at 100 years old. You know, they say the best the best time to plant a tree, right, is 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. So if you have not, you know, began to uh, began to invest, you know, you you should get started, especially if you're in a, a position where you have uh, disposable income, right? So. Um, how you can do it is, is simply by first, you know, identifying how much you have to invest. And then you want to talk with a financial professional about the best uh, investment vehicles to uh, look into so that you can make sure that, you know, you're, you're not throwing throwing your money away. Because if you if you were to go and put your money in a bad investment, well, you know, you, you would have been better off maybe going buy a, pair, a nice pair of shoes or something that you could have uh, held on to. So uh, it's important to talk to a financial professional like myself um, uh, and sit down and get a customized plan uh, that can uh, that can address your specific need. So, you know, there's a, there's a number of uh, investment vehicles, as we all know, uh, you know, stocks and bonds and, you know, there's other other uh, solutions like those that I offer that are more in the more in the uh, life insurance realm and, you know, cash accumulation uh, type policies that you can uh, you can get into to grow your money in a in a, a wise way so that over over a period of time, sometimes over a short period of time, but even over a, a, a long period of time, you could amass you know, a decent amount and be able to uh, live off some of it as well as pass it on. So when we talk about those who are up in age, I think that the important thing for, for them is to look at retirement. You know, you're at, you're, you're approaching a retirement age and you want to be in a position to where you don't have to take up a second job or take up a, a another job in retirement just to make ends meet because all you have to rely on is maybe social security uh, and you need to supplement your income. Um, so what you wanna be able to do is you wanna start putting larger amounts away in a, in a cash accumulation account, an, an account that grows and you're not risking losing that money. And um, if you okay. do that, then maybe you could play a little bit of catch up and 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 be able to have a little something in retirement. But you know, the older you get, the more money you have to you have to invest. So it's a time a time factor there. But uh, nevertheless, you know, it's never too late. And of course, the younger you are, the smaller the investment can be, and you can grow it over time, and you'll 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 uh, snowball a nice uh, a nice amount of money. Okay, so. Um, so what would be, what, what would be some recommendations for someone my age? Cause we really want to sure. talk about how to invest in some wise investments. Cause I know okay. just throwing our money now, just say in the stock market, isn't that wise? Just throw into the stock yeah. market. Um, yes. so what are some wise investments for someone my age? That's, that's a good question. So let me, let me say, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm I'm a little biased You're because, a young of, guy. because because <laughs> because of my uh, because of the license that I hold, but I also am you know knowledgeable in the finance realm because that is my that's my educational background. Um, so what what I would what I would say is you know the wise investment is an investment that you can invest in and not risk losing your money, right? So okay. yes. we know that stocks. Right. For the most part. Well, not even for the most part, but generally speaking, there's a, 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 a some risk there. You know, you put you put your money in the stock market and you you hope that the stocks that you purchase increase in value. But because of volatility, meaning the uh, the ebbs and flows of the market, we wind up, you know, riding a roller coaster. Right. And sometimes we don't have the stomach for it or we don't have the time for it. So. If you invest in the stock market and then you're looking at five years later when you're looking to take your money out, but maybe the market is doing horrible. Now, the money that you invested in the stock market is, is you know, you've lost a, a, a good percentage of it. And now you don't have time to wait to recover. Right. 
you're in a compromised position because you need it now, but you know, you, you need to also leave it in there to get it back. Otherwise you just take that loss. So a wise investment would be something like what we offer um, in the insurance uh, world. You know, we offer cash accumulate life cat life policies that have cash accumulation features. You know, this is life insurance. Now, you know, I don't want to misguide anyone or mislead anyone, but I also what I find in my business is that a lot of uh, individuals, especially our people, don't they don't even have uh, proper life insurance, right? So let's just start there. You know, first of all, we want to make sure that you're protected so that if anything were to happen to you, your family is not left with a financial burden and the worry of how they're going to, you know, bury their loved one that they just lost. So life insurance is very key. But we also give you a component of life insurance that it actually has features for retirement, college savings plans, you know, and 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 investment uh, cash accumulation uh, value. So you can go and get a life insurance policy, say for instance, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to protect protect your life, and you you feed that life insurance policy above and beyond what your regular premium is to maintain your life insurance, and then you grow that money because that money is invested on your behalf. And, you know, surprise, surprise, you don't have to worry about losing any of that money because everything you invest in there is protected uh, and guaranteed, not guaranteed against loss by the uh, actual insurance company. So this is not this is not my grandmother's insurance life insurance policy or my father's life insurance policy. This is a uh, this is really a savings savings account on steroids because if we talk about what the uh, interest rates are on savings accounts, you, 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 you'll realize you're going nowhere fast. So, and now, what, for a young person, how would yes. you? Yes. What would you, what 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 recommendation would you give for a young person, say age, um, twenty five, twenty five and thirty, and then I say twenty five and thirty five, and then thirty five to forty five. What are some of those recommendations you'd give the various different age groups at this current time of how to invest wisely? Good question. Um, the advice I would give you when I sit down with people, my goal is to try to, unless you're already a millionaire, you know, which I, I work with them too, and, and and it's a great thing. But if you're not a millionaire, my goal is to get you to become one. You know, how can I help you invest so that one day you will be a millionaire, you know, almost guaranteed, regardless of what you're doing to get there along the way if you just uh remain steadfast with how you invest into some of the uh investment vehicles that i show you then you can make sure yeah. that you have that in retirement so what i would do with a 25 year old is i would sit that 25 year old down i would uh determine what their what their uh income is i would i would look at uh how much they have to uh, put aside each month because see a lot of times when you're that age, your your liabilities are not as robust as uh, someone like you, yourself or myself, right? Um, I know for me, I'm I'm right there in that prime area of still having young children, young children still having uh, a home, you know, some things that need to be paid off. Those are liabilities. And so that takes up income. But for a young individual about 25, a lot of times they don't have those things just yet. You know, maybe they haven't had a child just yet. They just come out of college, just maybe got their first big job and they haven't even purchased their home yet. And so they're making a good amount of money but we want to make sure that they're not blowing it on Jordan tennis shoes and, you know, fancy cars because those things do not appreciate in value. You know, we want to make sure that they're taking a portion of that income because, like I said, a portion of everything you earn is yours to keep and setting that aside, not in the savings account. Right. Your savings account is for your emergency funds. You know, you only want a small percentage of your income in your savings account because your savings account does not grow in value because the interest rate is so minuscule. So you take the other portion of that money and you invest it in like I like I would say to a young 25 year old who probably doesn't have life insurance because 
you know, they feel like they're going to live forever, but we all know that's that's not reality. I would tell them, hey, one, let's get you some life insurance. Why? Because you're never as young and you're never as healthy as you are today, right? And we want to well, make I don't, sure. I don't want to stop you, but we have a caller. I'm sorry about that. I want to sure. get this caller because I don't want to lose our caller. A uh, caller, can yes. you say your first name, where you're calling from, and your question, please? Monique, and I'm calling from California. My question is, question. Do you, why do you recommend insurance uh, funds yeah. as an investment yeah. Yeah, versus mutual funds for investment? Well, I guess we lost the call. No, we got it. Did you hear that question? I, I did not. Oh, I'm sorry. The question was from Monique from California, and her sure. question was, why would you invest in insurance versus a mutual fund? That's a good question because, well, the reason why you would invest in insurance as opposed to a mutual fund is because a mutual fund is in the stock market, right? You're directly invested in the stock market, and there's a certain amount of risk there of loss. Right. So the whole objective is, that I tell people is I, I don't I don't say I don't encourage them not to invest in the stock market, but I want to make sure that you invest somewhere where you're not going to lose your principal investment. Right. I want to guarantee you're not going to lose the money that you're putting in and you're going to be able to grow that money over a period of time and in a lot of cases grow it better than you would you would be able to grow it in the with the mutual fund because of the ups and downs of the mutual fund right so directly invested in the stock market is for those who have already taken care of the more uh safe investment right so that you can protect your money and make sure that what you're investing you don't lose it you're only growing it so with 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 my investment uh, vehicles, you put everything you put in into it, it, you never lose it. You only grow it because it mirrors the stock market. It's not directly invested in the stock market. So your mutual funds, you know, your four hundred one k's, your you know, uh, uh, your IRAs, all of those are variable accounts. That's a variable account, meaning that it's it directly invested in the stock market. So if the stock market goes down then you you go down but you know i mean you you have diversification so you know maybe you don't take the plunge that the market takes but you still risk losing so we want to guarantee that you don't lose that's that's what i want to do because i understand that you know a lot of individuals are fascinated with the stock market and they 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 think that it's a great way to accumulate wealth but they have to deal with so much of the ups and downs. And, um, you know, as, as a community, I, a lot of us don't have the money to lose. We, you know, uh, stock market is kind of for people who can afford to lose, you know, what is your, what is your, what is your, 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 your risk aversion, you know, because it's all fun and games until you lose your money. And now you're chasing that, those losses and you're trying to recover. I guarantee you, you're not going to lose money with me. And on top of that, let me tell you another feature here, since we're talking insurance and life insurance, everybody doesn't need life insurance. I get that part. You know, I get that part, but a lot of us don't have it. Or people say, oh, I run into a lot of people, they say, well, I have, I have it through my job. Okay, so let's say 10 years later, your job lays you off. Do you still have it? The answer is no. But guess what? Now you're 10 years older and you still need to go get it. So there's a lot of us that don't have it, but let's talk about those who do have it. Okay, if you have, you know, life insurance, first of all, I want to make sure you have proper protection because you may not have the proper protection you need. You need to make sure that you have enough in life insurance to cover all of your liabilities and also to leave the uh, leave, leave a portion behind for the next generation. You know, because what I also focus on is generational wealth building. That's key. So you want to make sure you have enough life insurance for that. Let's say you do. Okay, well, great. Then that means that when you do 
when you get involved with one of the investment products that I that I offer, like a life insurance retirement plan, you know, then you 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 get a small portion of life insurance, you know, and this is just so that it can be could so that you can get the tax advantages that come along with it. Because I, I also say when we're talking about, you know, mutual funds and other variable accounts, you don't get the tax advantages that you get by investing in something like a life insurance retirement plan. So so there's some benefits there, but, you know, it's not for everybody. So I don't I wouldn't try to, you know, convince everybody to have it. But I, I want people to be informed. I wanted to make well, I just a wanted question. To say, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just going to say that I know about the retirement. You, you, yeah, I have retirement. Literally, it was my retirement, my 401k. During this COVID-19, it took a hit. It took a sure. hard hit. So I did lose a lot of money just on my retirement due to it was tied up in the stock. So, sure. I mean, I, I got my statement just recently, lost another 5000 I mean, literally lost quite a bit of money in the last couple of months it's almost half of what i had there so it, it's been it's been a challenge and that's why we want to start talking about how to build wealth and keep it because when you're in that stock stock market and your retirement there you don't realize it until you get that you, you get that you get your, your monthly your monthly statement and you're like wow what happened and so yeah. And so go go ahead, Invisible Man, because I'll ask your question, and then um, I had one of the no, questions. You, we, we're on the same page because uh, it's so much going on in the world today that people are struggling to have any income, let alone disposable income or investment income. Yes. And so that's the serious part. I just wanted to throw out two things. Uh, say the average income of us in terms of our household is just over 60% that of white households and so there's a disparity in what we actually get compared to the larger, you know, group. And then years ago, I did, uh, this is when I was in the physical world, an uh, Enron was going on, and yes. I was financial study. And so people lost their shirts, and they were really, really hurt. But now, this is the final thing. I want you to address this. One of the robber barons, he was, I can't think his name, might have been asked or somebody, was getting his shoes shined and the guy shining his shoes was trying to give him a stock market tip yeah. and he went and took his money out the market so who and where should you get tips from and that sort of thing that's what i'm asking that's a, that's a good question you, you you know you should get your tips from people you trust right those who are who are actually uh well educated and trained in the uh in the in the um field right and you should you should look to them for advice but you know you, you trust but verify as they say right so the more you know then the more you can decipher what you hear you know whether or not it's good advice or you know something to just uh take with a grain of salt so you know but but definitely we shouldn't be following fads and trends and oh this is what everybody's doing right now so you know i'm gonna do that you know, one of the, one of the things I, as you guys know, I'm in I'm in real estate as well. You'd be surprised how many people that I talk to who tells me, oh yeah, well I'm 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 going to get into a wholesale real estate investing, right? It's it's something that everyone says who wants to be in the business, but they don't really understand it. But the reason why they're saying it is because it is a common theme right now. This is what's being what's being preached all over the internet. And you know, if you go on YouTube, it's you know every time Dick and Harry is talking about it. And um, but they're not really giving you education in 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 real estate. So you wanna you wanna talk to somebody who can truly educate you, right? And who doesn't really have to charge you to educate you or who who's not dependent on you know uh, making a dollar off of you and that way you can you can better rely on their information okay very well quickly. we have a question right we have a question we have a caller I'm now sorry, let's I'm take sick. this caller and then what i want you to do if we take this caller um we, we i know i know you you do you give free advice and like today you're on yes. here, but you get free advice as well so caller can you please state your first name and your question, where well, you're calling from, your question, please. 
Caller, okay. are you there? Hi, my name is Latoya, and I'm calling from Maryland. All right, Maryland. There we go. Okay, I have two questions. One question is um, regarding retirement for um, for young people or anyone at any age. Do you recommend the Roth IRA as um, as an option? Just noting that um, sometimes that gives you the compound interest potential, and um, right. and it allows you to access your money um, as you're going on, like starting early with that. And then the second question is with the um, insurance saving vehicles. Um, they tend to, they seem to have a higher premium because um, I had um, experience with um, trying one out before. But what happens if um, to the savings portion, if a person is no longer able to or decide they don't want to continue to contribute to the fund, is there anything that carries over? And can you just talk a little bit about like what might um, be like one of those um, kind of the lock-in requirements, if there are any? Right. Well, Every everything you just mentioned there, and thank thank you for calling uh, Latoya. I believe she, you said your name was, uh, and thanks for listening. Everything you talked about right now, the Roth IRA as well as the insurance uh, savings vehicle is is a long term plan. So uh, one thing that you mentioned was being able to take take funds out. You know, we don't want to you know get it if we're going to be looking at taking funds out in the near future. Right. We know things happen. And that's the reason why I stress the importance of having uh, an emergency account. Right. Because your emergency account is the account that you, you should have to go into if need be. Right. Uh, due to, you know, something, some unexpected circumstances happening. But you should never have to touch your uh, Roth IRA or your insurance uh, savings account uh, in order to you know, take care of some something right now because that, those things are in place for retirement, right? That's the only way you're going to really get the best value out of them. With the uh, with the Roth IRA, you know, it's the, the thing there is once again, it's a variable account, so you're risking loss, right? You're 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 young, so you can sustain a few losses over time and still wind up you know, uh, in a good place in retirement, but it just depends. You know, you never know what things are going to be looking like by the time you get to retirement. And, you know, these type of, uh, these type of cataclysmic circumstances, such as what we're facing right now, they occur, you know, like every decade, you know, and they seem to be even more frequently, right? Because we had 2008. Now here we are in, you know, 2020 and, you know, um, it's just such a roller coaster, and then we have the presidential election, which is affecting it. So, it you 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 you're 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 risking loss, right? Whereas you're not risking loss here. You you mentioned that you know there's a there's a there's a cost factor. That's true, but look at it this way: What are you getting in exchange for the cost? Because the cost you're referring to is the premium, right? But what are you getting in exchange for the premium? You're getting you're leveraging the premium for a for a larger amount of money you know in the form of a death benefit because you know things happen you know i don't i don't necessarily like to talk about death but it's a, it's a reality and in my business i have to you know express the realities of it right you can walk out outside right now and 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 you know lightning strikes piano fall out the sky i like to use those those terms you know say it like that because one is funny and two you know, the odds of it happening is, is is next to nil. But we know that there are other circumstances like car accidents, uh, you know, um, all kinds of things that could happen where one could lose their life. And so if that were to happen on your way to investing and in saving a large amount of money, what would you have to show for it? So let's look at the IRA. And let's look at the the uh, insurance investment vehicle that I'm discussing. And let's say you start at the same time with both of them, right? So you got both of them here and you start out with uh, $250, right? And in the, in the insurance vehicle, you put $250 and you get $250,000 worth of insurance, right? Just in case that piano falls out the sky. And then with the Roth, you you put two hundred and fifty dollars, and now you're 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 investing in your Roth. Okay, great. Well, you know, let's say a month later, lo and behold, that piano falls out the sky. 
well, what are you what are you getting from each one of these accounts? The Roth, you're getting two hundred and fifty dollars and whatever you've accumulated, you know, and, and you're not even guaranteed the two hundred fifty dollars. Right. Because if the market lost, then you have less than two hundred and fifty dollars. Whereas with the insurance investment vehicle, you know, at, at, at the very minimum, you're getting two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that goes to your family. Right. You say, you know, some people say, well, what, what do I care about that? That's that's money that comes after I die. That's true. But are you leaving someone behind that you care about? Do you want to leave them with a burden or do you want to provide them with all of the all of the, the, the benefits that you were working so hard to provide them with? So when I talk to young younger individuals who don't have children, I usually uh, look in the direction of their parents because I say, who is your who is that person that you're living for? Right. When you're when you become a parent, you living for your children. Right. And you say, man, if something happens to me along the way, I want to make sure my children are OK. And I know with a lot of young individuals, it's their parents, their mother, maybe their father, you know, both of their parents. But, you know, it's grandma. And so you're on your way to accumulating wealth. You're on your way to being all you can be. But tragedy strikes. And if tragedy strikes, you still want to be able to assure those loved ones that you've done everything to uh, to make sure that you put them in a position that you wanted them to be in once you accomplished all your hopes and dreams. Uh, so, you know, I strongly believe in the insurance investment vehicle. And yes, if you were to stop paying, then you lose those benefits. Those benefits go away. You know, yeah, you stop paying car insurance, you no longer have, have insurance, you know, and OK, the money that you invested Yes, you have to invest it over a period of time and then you can access it because there is a such thing called a surrender charge. So, yeah, if you're investing in in, in the insurance uh, vehicle and you're putting above and beyond the principal, I mean, the uh, premium that you're that you're getting in exchange for the insurance, then if you were to stop that in one year, you know, or six months, yeah, there's a risk that you could lose that money. That's why I wouldn't let, I wouldn't allow anyone to set something up like this who uh, suspect that they could possibly be in that position. So that's why it's important to kind of have you have your ducks in a row to be able to get a uh, to get into an investment like this. But I also show them how over a short period of time, you know, sometimes two, three years, you can go in and start pulling money out if you want. But I don't I don't advise that because, like I said, I want you to save it until retirement. So, Mike, on that note, we're going to put the slide and then we're going to go on to the congressman because the congressman's on the line, too, as well. Now, you have a seminar coming up pretty soon. It's tomorrow, right? Very, Can we very true. I, I, was, I was just going to say I wanted to make sure <laughs> We we put that out can, there. Can we put can we put the slide up showing the seminar tomorrow, uh, Mr. Campbell? And also, I would like to say my wonderful husband, who is a partner with Mr. Right. Campbell here in the Maryland region, they actually are hosting free wealth creation seminars. And tomorrow they will be having a seminar. Can we put the slide up? And then we're gonna we're gonna close up with Mr. Campbell and hopefully see him tomorrow at the seminar. Um, um, producer, yes. Mr. Pierre, can we put the slide up? I encourage everyone to uh, join us and, and to actually uh, come and participate okay. and ask as many questions as you like there. And, you know, it's a world a world class education on financial literacy and we're going to be doing it. Yeah. Well, can you put the Zoom link up? We put the, we put the Zoom link as well as as well as well as a slide. Um, if you put the Zoom link in the slide, just so people can have that Zoom link in the slide. And for everyone out there, Mr. Campbell will be having a show tomorrow. Um, he will have, he's having a series, a series that started last week, and he has three more sessions that they will be talking, and these are free seminars, um, no cost at all to anyone. Uh, they're at Saturday at 6 to 8, um, the, Zoom, the Zoom number. Um, trying to see if we can get that on the slide, the Zoom contact. Yes, um, yes. Let's see. Okay. Um, I think we'll get that up. We'll probably get that up a little later because we sent that. Um, Pierre was sent by myself and Mr. Yabo. We sent you the Zoom link as well as the flyer. 
Um, so if we can get that up, you know, if we can get that up a little later. Okay, so we're going to, uh, Mr. Campbell, let's thank Mr. Campbell. I am so excited. So you can actually call, if you can, you can, I'm going to send you the Zoom link. You can go on the, you can call on the Zoom, on the Zoom link. Um, but we have the congressman on to talk about what's happening right now with the census. So Mr. Campbell, we're going to try to get that Zoom link up for you. Um, oh, right. Within the, before the hour is over. But I want to thank you. Thank you so much. And um, just on another note, you know, I want to say that, you know, Mr. Campbell really gave us time today. Unfortunately, his father um, was sick today and had a and had a and had a and had a stroke. And so, I want to I want to give you my regards and wish wish your father well. Yes, and sir, thank, thank you. you so much for coming on today. Um, thank we're going to start much. with Mr. Campbell. We're going to go on to Mr. We're going to go on to the senator. Okay, Jamie, are you there? Yeah, I'm just, I've been waiting in the waiting room. Nobody's let me in. Okay, he's, he's trying to let you in now uh, in the waiting room. Let me see where Pierre, Pierre, can you let the senator in, please? He's in the waiting room. All right, not the senator, the congressman. Yeah. Soon to be our president. First, are you going to be senator first or then president? Or are you just going to go for president? Which one, Jamie? want to promote your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Afric Today. Fogham. You can watch us live at the same time on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Afric Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africktoday.com. Africa Today, the best of digital TV. want to promote your business? Do you want to talk about your nonprofit organization? Do you want to talk about your culture? Introducing the online web TV, Afric Today. Fogham. You can watch us live at the same time on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and using the Afric Today app. Download our app today for Android or Apple. Promote your business today. For more information, go to www.africtoday.com. Africa Today, the best of digital TV. Welcome to my favorite congressman. Can you hear me okay? Hello, Dr. Bowman. Thank Can you. Hear me? Your hair looks great. What are you doing to your hair lately? It looks good. Say it again. Your hair looks great. You're not oh, gray like me. <laughs> All the gray that I well, have. Nancy and, well, Pelosi said, uh, we're going to take you from mad professor to founding father. So... 
She made me come all my hair <laughs> straight back. Hmm? Well, it looks wonderful, but it's no gray. So, you know, hey, you know, I'm, you're, you're looking better than I am. I have so much gray up there now. So we want to welcome, we want to welcome Honorable Jamie Raskin, who is, and I'll tell you a little about him, Jamie Raskin, he's Maryland's eighth congressional district from the U.S., from, from here in Maryland, our, our eighth congressional district of Maryland, and the U.S. House Representative. He represents Montgomery County, Carroll, and Frederick Counties here in the state of Maryland. Congressman Raskin was sworn in for a second term in the 160th Congress, January 3rd, 2019, and we want to welcome, um, we want to welcome our honorable Senate Congressman Jimmy Raskin, and actually, I have to say he's my congressman as well from my district, and he is returning member of the House Judiciary Committee, and also the Committee of Oversight and Reform, and the Committee on the House of Administration. He joined the Congress, well, I won't go into his whole bio, but you can always read that, we want to really get to him, but just want to say quickly, that prior to this term in Congress, he served as a three-term state senator here in the state of Maryland and served as a majority whip for the senator, Senate then. But I won't go into all of that because he is also, he's a welcome author, but we need to get to talking about census. I was on a conference call, a Zoom call with Congressional Black Caucus, and we brought Jamie here today to really talk about what, what, do, what are the changes in the census and how does that affect us and who should really be filling out these censuses? Um, Congressman Raskin, can you tell us a little bit what's going on with this with the census today, 2020? The well, census look, the, 2020. The big change is actually really good news, which is you can do it online, you can call it in, um, you can mail it in, uh, or you can wait for them to come to your door. But we don't want to do that, so. You know, we're encouraging people to go online and fill it out. And remember, you're filling it out for who was there living in your house on April the 1st. And this applies to everybody, Dr. Butler. So um, the, the way the founders of the Constitution set it up is they wanted a full count of everybody who's in the country uh, right at that time. And so that includes people who can't vote because they're children or because they're non-citizens. Um, it includes everyone. The founders wanted everybody to be counted. So um, the key thing for people to understand is that this information is not used for anything other than the census, which means how we're going to end up distributing money programmatically. So it's very important to the states and the counties and cities how much money people are going to get for different things like, you know, food assistance and how much is it going to be distributed for highways and roads and for other federal programs, right? And then also for how many congressional seats we're going to have, how many state legislative seats in this area or that area, city council and everything. So we need everybody to be counted so every community gets its fair share of the resources and of the representation in Congress, in the county council, in the state legislature, uh, and so on. This information cannot be used for any other purposes, not for law enforcement, not for immigration, nothing. All of it is according to the design of the framers of the Constitution, just for figuring out where the population lives. Yeah, and thank you for saying that, because um, there was there were quite a bit of questions and. One of the things that I've been running with in my the communities that I work in and that I represent is that they're so concerned and afraid of this information being utilized for something other than just the counting of where they are and the services. Because one of the questions they asked, and this is a question that since they're looking at how they're going to apply services, so the information has to go somewhere. What is the guarantee? that individuals who don't want to report because of one reason or the other, what is the guarantee that this information is not being shared with other departments in the administration and being utilized for things that might be, might adversely affect an individual? Well, it's against the law to use it for any other purpose and it's a crime to uh, misuse census information for some other purpose. Um, 
And, you know, that's been a bipartisan commitment for a long time. And, I, you know, I agree with you that we're going to have an issue because people understand that in the Trump period, you know, yes. there's a lot of law breaking going on at the highest levels of government. So I don't blame people for wondering about it. But on the other hand, all I can say is it remains against the law to misuse this information. And, um, you know, it, it, it should be completely and totally anonymous the way it's been every other census going back to the beginning of the Republic. All right, so um, so you would encourage everyone, because I know I'm encouraging everyone to fill out, fill out the census and be counted. So they don't have to put their name, just count the many, as many people in that household, correct? Absolutely. You know, if, if it's a mom and a dad and four kids, you put down mom and dad, four kids. If there's, you know, um, uh, Uncle Joe who's been living there, for the time being until he finds a new job or whatever, you put Uncle Joe down. It's everybody who is present in the house on on as of April 1st. You know, so you might have to reconstruct who's there um, at this point. But I think we've got 63% of the people who participated. That still means we got more than a third of the people, Dr. Butler, who haven't participated yet. And so we got to get everybody out there. We need to make sure everybody uh, mm -hmm. You know, in my district, that's Montgomery County, Frederick County, Carroll County, everybody in Montgomery County, Silver Spring, Tacoma Park, Wheaton, Rockville, Kensington, Bethesda, Aspen Hill, uh, Cabin John, Glen Echo, Rockville, I mean, Gaithersburg, you name it. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, as if this is the live show, so please, can we have the studio number? So for the last five minutes, if anybody wants to call in, and ask our congressman any questions, please do call in. It was a, this is a live show. I know there's a lot of questions about the census. As we know, the window for entering the census is going to be now, it's, it's now a month. When are they going to stop doing the census? Because one of the things also, not everyone has a computer access. Um, and because not every, you know, not, we just don't, everyone just doesn't have it. And the communities I work with, a lot of them might not have it, especially if they don't have kids in the school system. So how can they fill it up? You don't have computer access. And when are they going to start coming knocking well, at our doors? You know, everybody should have gotten a postcard. There's a number on there that you can call. And, you know, I think you have a little video. Did you show the video? It's got the contact information up there. So you can call it in. You can mail it in. Uh, you can go online and do it. You can go to the library and do it if you don't, you know, have internet access at home. Um, any of those should work. So uh, there, there are lots of different ways to make it happen. You can also wait for them to come to you, but that's not ideal with COVID-19. You might not want to wait yes. for them, you yes. know, to come to the house. I mean, they're trained to be safe and on how to do it, but why complicate it for the government? Why complicate it for the census takers, you know? Um, just... Just go ahead and call it in. So for all of my viewers out there, please complete the census. If there's any, I said, I'm not sure if any of the questions, we have any questions now coming in, but um, we did one of the things that we wanted to find out, what is the last date to report for the census now? Well, they just moved it up uh, to um, the, uh, I believe the date they moved it up to is the end of September, September 31. Um, so we don't, that's not a lot of time. I mean, we've got basically the rest of August and then we got the rest of September. So we're really looking at like seven weeks in which to count the 37% of Americans. That's tens of millions of people. So please, everybody sit down with your family, count up how many people were living in the household on April 1st. And then uh, you'll be able to call in information and the whole thing should take less than five or 10 minutes. It's really important to our community. It's really important to every community. And right now, Carroll County, which is in my district, is leading the state and um, Frederick and uh, Montgomery are kind of in the middle. And so there's still lots of communities that haven't been participating as actively. So we need to get everybody in there. Yeah, so for all the audience out there, please know that it's been moved up for a whole month now. It's September 31st as a deadline to complete the census, which doesn't give us a lot of time. Um, can you tell us about what percent 
has reported and what percent is unreported at this point in time, if you have that information? We nationally, I mean, it's nationally, nationally. 67% of the people have reported, which is good. That's two thirds of the people, but, uh, or, or rather 63% have 37% have not. So that's still more than a third of the people who yet have not yes. yet been recorded. So, I mean, this is a civic duty we've got. I mean, it's like, it's a civic duty and it's a civic right. It's like voting, you know, it's, um, we want everybody to go out and, and vote, of course, uh, you got a right to vote, but you've got a duty to vote if you have the right to vote. The census is a duty that applies to everybody in the country. Um, and we record everybody, even people who don't have the right to vote, like children and non-citizens and so on. Complete the census. It doesn't, you don't have to put a name, just how many, we need to count the numbers of people in that household. Please complete the census, because right now, to every, to every, to every 10, every one, one tenth of every person of color comes from the continent, from the, in the black community in this United States currently. And we are so unreported as a group of people. So please, please complete the census. I want to thank my honorable congressman for coming on at this short notice. I called him today when we had, when I, after I listened to the Congressional Black Caucus and their plea for going out and completing the census, I was like, oh my God, I thought more people had completed it because we did ours months ago. But we know now that almost a quarter of the individuals in this country, are actually more, 37% have not completed the census. So we're yeah. looking at and a lot of missing folks. Well, look, thank you. Uh, as always, Dr. Yvette Butler, you're always right on top of it and what needs to be done. But this is what the community needs to be thinking about. Spread the word. We need 100 percent participation of everybody to make sure you're counted, to make sure our community gets its fair share of the resources, to make sure that our community, every community is fairly represented at every level of government. You know, we've talked a lot about that before. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. No, thank you for coming on. I love to have you on again. Thank you, thank you. I said my heart you goes out to you, as you know. So this my is going to be our future president one day. So just keep an eye on, uh, just keep an eye on Congressman Raskin, and we. And the Zoom number is on there for tomorrow's conference for the w building wealth for the building wealth in the Black community. Please look at the Zoom link. Um, we're going to close off with a video, and I want to thank Afri today. Can we close off with the video um, for the census? And can we close off with that? And then uh, we will be done. But please look at, please don't forget tomorrow, you can call in for the Zoom for the free at six to eight. For the thank you, Dr. V. Bye bye. Beginning in March, the U.S. Census Bureau will invite households across the country to participate in the 2020 census. But what is the census? Simply put, the census is a headcount of every person living in the United States. To be sure the government represents the people, the U.S. Constitution requires a population count every 10 years. Ever since 1790, the census has determined the number of seats each state receives in the U.S. House of Representatives. It is, and always has been, a cornerstone of our democracy. We still use it to determine representation, but leaders also use the data to make decisions. Your response helps guide planning for the future of our communities. The 2020 Census will help inform decisions on how billions of dollars are allocated annually for critical public services like roads, schools, hospitals and healthcare clinics, fire and emergency response services, and hundreds of other programs. In 2020, for the first time, you'll be able to complete the census online, by phone or by mail. It asks a few simple questions, like how many people live in your home on April 1st, including their age and sex, and if there are any children living there. You should know that by law, all census responses are completely confidential and your personal information cannot be shared with any law enforcement agencies. Every person counts, no matter who you are or where you live. So whether your family has participated for decades or the 2020 census will be your first, we all have a role in shaping the future of our country.
So I want to thank you so much for watching today. And remember, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. to 9, 6 to 8 p.m., that's Eastern Standard Time. And that's the Eastern Standard Time or New York Standard Time on the East Coast, Eastern Standard Time. Please contact us on our call in on Zoom for Building Wealth, for in the Black community for Building Wealth. It's a free seminar. Um, this is the second seminar talking about how to create wealth in the Black community. The Zoom link is 818-6367-8390. Just click Zoom, put that ID in, and you'll go right into the call at 6 o'clock tomorrow. These are free seminars to help us learn how to build wealth. And I want to thank you again. I want to thank my co-host, Invisible Man, for being here. Thank Afri today. Signing off, Dr. Butler Yaboa, Invisible Man. Thank you, American Africans United. Right. Thank you very much. Welcome, you're watching Afrique Today with Harriet Shangarai coming to you with community update. First, I'm gonna start with African, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna start with the census cause that's really important. We're celebrating the census weekend here in Montgomery County, starting to, uh, August 7th up to August the 10th. It is vital that we make sure each and everyone in our community is counted. I'm going to ask you to visit www.2020census.gov. It is safe, it is quick, and it is, it is not going to be used for any other purposes but census. Please make sure that you are all counted and reach out to your friends and community members to remind them to complete their census. This is how we get special programs to come to our communities. Another item that I want to bring to your attention, it is the renter's resources. We all know that eviction moratorium has been lifted here in Maryland since July 25th. A number of people are running behind their rent and they may need help. I want you to call 311 and follow up or visit www.magamarycounty.gov forward slash renters. For resources for those who are renting if you're falling behind your rent please call 311 to find out about more resources that may be available to assist you another thing i want to bring to your attention is covid 19 testing montgomery county has put a number of centers covid testing is free call 240 -1 240-777-1755 and get your test. Also remember to put your mask, wash your hands and observe social distancing. Keep everyone healthy in your family and those around you or whenever you go to the store. Please be sure to protect yourself and protect others. One more update I have for you today is the information about single parenting households. Montgomery College has a very special program prepared to share about information about all resources available for single parenting households. And you can go to uh, montgomerycollege.edu forward slash single parent conference and register. That conference is going to be held August 8th to 2020. So this is all I have prepared for you. Uh, visit Africa Today platform for all these flyers or reach out to montgomerycounty.gov and go through 
for different resources that you're looking for as long as you are residents of Montgomery County. We want you to stay safe. Please wash your hands, wear your mask, and observe social distancing. Remember to count and please do vote. Thank you. Harriet Shangarai Community Update with Africa today. Thank you.